bless this generation We're turning over every stone Hoping to find salvation In a world that's left us cold So can we get back to the altar Back to the arms of our first love There's only one way to the Father And He's calling out to us To the captive it looks like freedom To the orphan it feels like home To the skeptic it might sound crazy To believe in a God who loves In a world where our hearts are breaking And we're lost in the mess we've made Like a blind delight in the dead of night It's the gospel, it's the gospel that makes a way Sorry for the gum. I have nowhere to spit it out, and I'm kind of stuck up here away from the napkins and the trash can. So, yeah, I hated speaking in front of a group until I got this microphone one time. I felt compelled to get up here. Now I won't. Yeah, and I like it. <laughs> so let me think what I've got to say. I think the biggest thing is, wow, it's a brand new year. How exciting is that? Fresh starts for all of us. Okay, it's time to take what we learned last year and keep it going. And then like the younger kids here like to say next level, I'm taking it all to the next level. I'm not yeah. going to forget anything that I've done and put into my repertoire. It's all working. And I'm going to just keep adding to it and getting stronger in the things. Um, not perfect. I'm still working on many, many things. Um, you know, still some personal pain. But um, if you all can remember in May of... So 2016, May of 2016, when I came to church and I cried all over the <laughs> coffee shop in the church every Wednesday and Sunday. And I thought, 
I have never really been in touch with my feelings until I found a place where I felt safe enough. And I think in my life, I was at a point where I was so overwhelmed and I'd never given myself a chance to relax. And I thought, try church. And I did. And I found um, a piece. I was reading an article. I guess it was like a little article on the internet about psychology and the psychology of how you absorb um, the energy and the um, the, vib- the vibrations, I guess, the feelings in groups of the people that you sur- who you surround yourself with. And I started feeling very calm. I know that um, when I started, I thought if, if I feel like I belong, <laughs> which it took a while, even though everyone was so welcoming, I just um, was coming from an atheistic background. It was, I, you know, I was wondering, what are all the rules? <laughs> And there weren't that many. You just keep showing up and, you know, trying. And I just thought I, every now and then I'd catch, like, Elijah or somebody and ask a little question, like, so what about this? Or I'd ask somebody, so what about that? Oh, that's okay. You could do that <laughs> to be a Christian. Or no, that's probably bad. Don't. <laughs> you might want to think about <laughs> let's not do that. So, um, so Yeah working on things and then um so I thought what am I you know what what am I absorbing I'm absorbing like people who want to do good people who are trying to be happy do the right things and are trying to be conscious of the people around them and not just of themselves heal yourself and then pass it along to the people around you and it's really just incredible how this all worked on me every one of you nobody I don't go to other churches it's this group so all the energy that I got from everyone in this room helped me to heal, and I am so much farther along. How long has it been since I cried? I might be moved by one of these beautiful songs and cry out of joy, but um, it's been a really long time since I shed a tear. I've just been so very happy, grateful. Welcome 2018. Let's have another great year together. Um, So I just got really blessed in those songs, and I felt like the Lord was telling me that I should get up and share what I was thinking about. Um, I love In Christ Alone. It's one of my favorite songs ever. And today, when we were singing it, I started really thinking about the part where it's like, um, nothing can pluck me from your hand. Is that right? Um, And it's like, no matter what trials come and no matter what happens, like, I'm yours and you're mine. And it was really great to, like, sing that and to pray that. And then I started thinking about, like, what does that mean? And... um, in my life, what does that mean? And I started thinking about this past year and my life, and I was like, you know, I've never really gone through something super tough that would pluck me from his hand, so I need to be prepared to do that. And I started praying, and I just felt like I've just had so many like great examples of that in my life, of people going through things that were just unthinkable. And coming out on the other side and I was just like thinking about that and just knowing that like if those people can do that and the examples that we have in the Bible of all the things that they went through um how possible it is with God and I felt like God was telling me like um I am good and I am sovereign and I love you and nothing that is going to come up in life is too much for you to handle And I was just so overwhelmed with, like, thankfulness and happiness that that we serve a God that is faithful and that wants us and he is ours and we are his. And no matter what comes up in this next year or um, in my life in the future, that it's that he's mine and that I can stay with that no matter what. So. Hi, folks. Happy 2018. Um, I was struggling with something this week that made me really kind of question about my true Christian beliefs. Mel and I have had a uh, friend of mine, very close and dear friend, uh, living with us since last October. Um, He needed a place to stay and, you know, he had a lot of things going on in his life. And so we, we welcomed him into our home. At the end of November, his uh, fiance, who lived in uh, Colombia, actually, finally got her visa to come over. 
and it's been really tough with the two of them in our home. Obviously, Mel and I need our privacy and that sort of thing. So I had to make that decision to say, you know what? It's time for you to move on. And it was really hard from a faith perspective because especially with Mel's background with the homeless and all that, not that he was homeless, um, but it really tugged on my heart and still in a way is. And, and it just dawned on me that, you know what? Maybe this is what God has in plan for him. Maybe this is what he needs. And he knows what we need. And I'm sure Mel will tell you, we need our space, obviously. So it, it kind of been tearing at me a little bit. I told Melanie it, that it wasn't, but it was. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's, it's just amazing because now I think I've confirmed it in my heart that I am doing the right thing in doing this. And um, I'm looking forward to the future for him. I know he's uh, I'm not the most favorite person in his life right now. But <laughs> that's okay. Maybe he'll see uh, what happens down the road. So I just kind of wanted to share that and let you know that sometimes God makes you make tough decisions. And sometimes you just do it. So thanks. Yeah. Well, I've been thinking about putting God first, which is a wonderful subject. Um, I think it's one of the most critical things about our walk with God is putting him first. I think a lot of you would agree. We, we talk about it a lot, but what are the, all the different facets of it? I hope that the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, uh, touches our hearts, pricks our hearts today. Um, you know, we can say words and we can do things, but only the spirit of God working in our hearts and drawing us can really make the difference. And so, Lord, I just ask you to touch us today. Touch my heart. Touch the people's hearts here today. And, and have your way as we seek you first. Uh, I had some really lame New Year's jokes I'm not going to tell. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> okay, just one. There's, they're not even real. I don't know. It's, okay, so... <laughs> All right, so I made a resolution. I made a resolution that I, I'm going to keep this one. I can keep this one. No dieting all year long. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I find myself, I've been talking lately sometimes about worrying. You know, I, I, and I find my, I've been present to my own worrying uh, lately. You know, more. Uh, my daughter's engaged. They're going to be married. Uh, Brandon and. Jada will be married towards the end of the year, and uh, I find myself worrying about that. You know, how is how's their life going to be? I find myself worrying about, oh, all kinds of things about 2018. You know, how's the band? There's a couple guys from the Neil Morse Band are here today, and uh, we're glad, glad to see Bill and Randy here. And, uh, you know, I've been worried about the album that we're working on, and, you know, I find myself... Uh, you know, thinking about a friend that's sick and just, you know, it's good to be concerned. You, know, you want to have a heart of compassion. That's a line that I'm always looking for the right balance with. You know, Jesus had dominion, it says, over, over the things of the earth, the things of the flesh. He had dominion, but it didn't mean that he didn't weep or it didn't mean that he didn't have compassion. And he didn't have dominion from above. He comes, he comes down to have to be with us in our trials and in our, in our painful things. So we ought to be that way as well, you know, so we don't want to try to be like, okay, I want to be like above any concerns. Do you see what I mean? But I don't want to get into a fear kind of, kind of place. So it's something that I deal with, and I guess my problem is that I forget that I'm in the world but not of it. I forget that... I tend to forget that uh, my citizenship is in heaven, the scripture says. So 
if you could put up Philippians 3.20, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly await for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's quite a concept, isn't it? In fact, Jesus, when he's in the earth, he says in one place, he makes a, a present tense reference that he is in heaven. So he's in the earth, but he's in a heavenly realm, spiritually here, right? And so that is, that's really, I think, the Christian goal is to walk this life, to do this life so filled with the Spirit and so filled that his, with his love that we are him, right? That we are Christ in the earth. Um, did anybody watch It's a Wonderful Life over the holiday season? Yeah. Yeah. You, do you, you, are you one of those that never miss it? Yeah. Um, me too. Me, me too. <laughs> I, well, this, uh, this time I did, I went, to a, I went into a bit of a turkey coma. I did. And I, I, so I fell asleep halfway through. So I missed a little bit of it, but I think I, I know it pretty well. And if you haven't seen it, it's, uh, the, the main character, George Bailey, he, um, played by James Stewart. He uh, suffers a financial crisis and considers suicide, and probably most of you know the story, at least, anyway. But uh, I talked about it once, and a bunch of people said, oh, you know, we've never seen it. So I said, oh, I guess I better explain it. Will and I, we were, we've been working out a lot together over the, over the holidays, and we wind up talking about It's a Wonderful Life quite a bit for some reason. There's a lot in there. And I was thinking about George and the things that he suffers and the, you know, the challenge that he faces and how he prays. He's, you know, he's about to take his own life and he's praying on that bridge. And, you know, uh, <clears throat> the thing with George is that he didn't know that his God had him in the palm of his hand, did he? He had to kind of learn all of that. And as we do as well. Now, most of us don't have issues that we're dealing with that are that severe. We're not threatened with prison and scandal. But we have other things that are troubling us maybe more continually, right, than like some big thing. It's more like this of this continual buzz of stress that we live with and the things that are sort of always in the back of our minds. Am I, am I, am I relating? Can you guys relate to that? Though my question is, do you, do you have the peace that you'd like to have today? Going into 2018, do you have the rest? In one place it says that uh, the Sabbath of God, we are always in the Sabbath. We don't have to observe the Sabbath anymore because we are always at rest in Him. And I would just venture to guess that most of us would like to have more of that rest. Like real rest that only comes from him. The blessed assurance that only comes from the Spirit of God, right? We'd like to have more of that. I know I would. Um, and we might think, you know, uh, well, I'd have it if not for my circumstances. If it wasn't for this, if it wasn't for this issue, you know, if it wasn't for that I've got these bills and I don't know how to pay them, if it wasn't for this relationship that's really, I kind of know, is like really a problem. I mean, if I had a really great relationship like that person, then I could have peace, right? If I was really smart like that guy, I wouldn't have to worry about my grades. If I was the most talented person in the world, then I wouldn't have to worry about whether the album was going to turn out or not, <laughs> right? But we know somewhere in our hearts that it doesn't really matter about our circumstances, right? I mean, we have great examples, not just from the scriptures, but from history of all kinds of amazing people that lived above their circumstances. Uh, the Apostle Paul writing all, much of the New Testament from prison, for example. It's always a great example. Uh, Martin Luther King, if you've ever read his the speech that he makes in Birmingham after they just burned his house down and there the angry mob is ready to go retaliate and he preaches love he preaches love your enemies it's very powerful you know uh Dietrich Bonhoeffer very well known 
a uh, pastor who was imprisoned imprisoned by the Nazis wrote The Cost of Discipleship, this amazing book from a Nazi prison. Uh, Jackie Pullinger going to Hong Kong uh, to start her, you know, what's now a very flourishing ministry in China to addicts and things under, you know, very dire circumstances. And uh, so, so we know that it's possible to be so filled with God's love Let's read what Paul wrote from prison to the Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians 3, 17, 19, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend. And that word comprehend sometimes is translated apprehend. Don't we want to apprehend God's love? Like the scope of it. Look the way, may be able to comprehend with all the saints. What is the width? and the length, and the depth, and the height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Wow. Whew. Written from prison, folks. So it's not about our circumstances. It's possible to live a life that's so filled with God's love that you do not respond in a predictable way to the cares of this world. And I know that that's what many of us are looking for here today. And you might think, oh, well, those were really extraordinary people. Don't we always think that? I always think, well, that's Martin Luther King. You know, uh, that's Dietrich Bonhoeffer. I'm sure, I can't speak for them, but I'm sure if they were here, they would say, there's nothing special about me. I, I, I'm not extraordinary. I serve an extraordinary God. We serve an extraordinary God. And we can have peace no matter what. One time I was going to a, 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 to start a tour in Europe in Hamburg with Flying Colors. And uh, let's see, the f my flight was canceled and they lost all my luggage. So I showed up like 45 minutes before the very first gig at this, on this tour with no equipment and sweatpants, whatever clothes I was wearing. And I just had peace with God about it. I was just like, well, there was nothing I could do about it. I was like, well, this is this is how it is, Lord. Help us through it and show me what I need to learn. Help help me to witness in times of stress. You know, you can be a great witness in those times. Like that that, that I think it really witnessed one of the one of the guys in the band said, How can you be so calm? <laughs> and uh I didn't tell him about how I just chewed a guy out at the airport. No, I'm kidding. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I just said, I just said, I don't know. It's like, well, I don't, there wasn't, there wasn't anything I could do about it. So, so my question for you is what are, what are, we, what are you really after? What are you really after? Um, <clears throat> like, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. <laughs> we were on this cruise ship, cru cruise ship recently and I was playing this game called follow the line so they play, this mu they play the music up to a certain point, and they cut it off, and you're supposed to sing the line. So I, I was the last man standing, and then they played that song. <laughs> People from the audience could run, run up, and they said, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. And, and then the, this lady runs up and says, what is it? I want to, do you know it, girls? Yeah, zigga, zigga, zig, ah, she knows it. I want to zigga, zigga, zig, ah. So what they really, really want is something that makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> this is their true heart's desire. <laughs> but what are we really after? What is the, what's the real desire of our heart that we're really going for? You know, are you really after the things of God? Are you, are, you know, are you, or are you really truly desiring the things of the world with a little bit of God mixed in? Right? We want, you know, we, we're really going after all this stuff in our everyday life, man. We're spending a ton of time on going after this stuff and trying to have success and to, and all these kinds of things, and then like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I forgot to pray, oh yeah, okay, hey, uh, let, 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 I got like, you know, two minutes in the car, like, oh Lord, okay, okay, boom, go, right? Isn't that how we are? I mean, I know that a lot of times, that's the way my life seems to go, and we try to fit God into our schedule. Guess what? If he's not the main dish, it doesn't work. The Christian life does not work for him to be a side dish, it just doesn't work. The Christian life just does not work like that. 
Jesus didn't die to be a side dish for you, right? You know, that's, that's not it. We got to make him the main thing. Jesus tells us we can't serve two masters. No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon or riches. So the question is, what master are you truly serving today? What master are we truly serving? If you see in your heart that you're not truly, truly serving the Lord with all your heart, turn. I implore you. I urge you to turn. I urge myself to turn every day. I feel myself getting caught up. I feel myself getting taken out. We've got to bring ourselves back to have him be the center. It was so wonderful. The, this guy, a friend of mine, a musician in Poland, he said, I, I was playing in this band, and it was a worship band, supposed to be all about God. And, but as I labored with those guys, after a while I realized, and he said to me with big wide eyes, he says, God was not the center. And so I quit. And now I'm in a band that's not nearly as good, but God is the center. He must be. And we can turn anything into a God. We talked about that on, la on a Wednesday and last week. We can turn anything, anything into a God. Anything that's more important to you than God is an idol. Anything. You can turn anything into a God. You can turn music into a God. Ask me how I know. You can turn building a house into a God. Oh, man, I, I can't do that. I don't have time. I can't, I can't uh, you know, I can't come to church. I can't serve others. I can't, I don't have time because I'm, I'm building this house, man. I'll be back when it's done. Well, I hope you make it back when it's, gone, when it's all done. <laughs> Sometimes we think we can take a vacation from God. Some of us won't make it back. You know what I'm saying? We got to stay we got to stay in. we got to keep gathering together. I don't think people realize the importance of gathering together. I think it's really important. It's not the only thing that's important, but it's one of the things that's really important. We need it. We, you know, we're not always aware of our spiritual needs. We're aware of our physical needs. We know when we're hungry, right? I'm not going to look at anybody in particular. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you're hungry and you know who you are, right? <laughs> no. I'm kidding. But we know when we have physical needs, but we don't always know when we have spiritual needs, right? And one of the things that can wake us up is when we gather together and we talk to each other. And, you know, I've been woken up like, yeah, I was woken up last week by some of the things that were said in here. It's like, yeah, yeah. Put God first and all things will be added unto you. Let's put that up. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We're working on all these things, right? We're working, maybe working on our relationship. We're, we were talking about slaying the giants. We're, we're working on beating that addiction. We're working on, you know, uh, whatever it is with our business. Or we're working on something at the church. We're working on, it can be great things. It's not bad to be working on things. But many times, if we'll put God first, then it will just come. God will just provide it. And we don't have to, like, scratch and claw and try to make things happen. And it's our nature to try to make things happen, all of us. In fact, sometimes we'll feel like we're not being responsible if we don't. It's really hard for me with a lot of my responsibilities. I've got to let them go. I know I'm responsible for this, God, but, you know, look, I'm giving it all to you, and whatever you give me, whatever you lay on my heart to do, I'm going to do that with all my heart, soul, and strength. But it, if, you, if you don't lay it on me, I'm just going to rest and trust you. I'm going to rest and trust you, and that's the only way that we can have that rest that we were talking about. The only way to have it is to put him first in all things. Isn't that what he says? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added to you. You know, we want to 
We want to get the healing and then we'll have faith. Right? We don't put faith first. We don't see God first. It's like, well, I'm, you know, I'm hoping for this thing and I'll believe God for it if it happens. Right? We're all in the same boat, aren't we? You know, I'll believe God's going to heal that person when he does it. But until then, man, I don't know if I'm going to put my faith first. I don't know if I'm going to believe God to pay, pay these bills. I don't believe if I'm going to believe God that I'm going to have this great relationship. We got we to gotta put our faith first. That's what Jesus is saying. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added unto us. Is he your priority today? Like me, you know, we can become concerned again. We can become concerned again with things that we thought we had already dealt with. We can become concerned again with the things of the world. Become concerned again with the political climate or, you know, whether this thing's going to happen or that thing. Or, uh, you know, you start getting enrolled in the, the conversation that of no possibility that the world is. And if you don't know what I mean, you need to go talk to some people about the music business. Because you'll get a lot of no possibility real fast. Because it's just like, oh, yeah, well, it's not going to happen because of this. It's not going to happen because of this. Nobody's even buying music anymore. You know, what? whatever it is, it's just like, it's no possibility. People are, you're not going to say, oh, yeah, I want to do this and this and this. And they're all going to go, yay, yeah, let's go. Not usually. You're going to hit a lot of no possibility. You're going to hit a lot of no's out there, whatever it is that you're trying to, trying to do. You know, oh, you're not talented enough. You're not good enough. And a lot of times that stuff's all up in your head. You don't even need somebody from the outside telling you. You got, you got the enemy right in your head saying you're not pretty enough. You're not talented enough. You're not smart enough. You're too old. You're at relationships never going to work because you guys are too different. It's, this, things aren't going to work out. Right? We got that. We got, that's the battle. We got to bring that to Jesus. You got to just bring that stuff. We got to say no to that, those conversations. Say no to that stuff and put him first and he'll deal with it. Don't let those things take hold. Turn and say to yourself, I'm not after those things anyway. Hallelujah. I'm not after those things anyway. I'm really, what I want, what I really, really want is you. And I can have you alone in my room on my knees. I can have you just going to and saying a kind word to somebody at the grocery store. I can have you alone in my car. I don't need a bunch of people for the, any of that. We can have him. We can have success. We're looking for success. You can have success with him anywhere under any circumstances. I'm conducting the orchestra here. Anywhere, under any circumstances, we can have the only thing that matters. This is the good news. That's the gospel. Is the eternal life and peace with God comes through Jesus Christ. It's available for all people everywhere in every set of circumstances. The poor, the rich, the proud, the everybody, the the you know, the uh the the Greek, the Jew, what we're all the, the male or female, whatever you are, <laughs> you can have it all in Him, right here, right now. Hallelujah, Amen, Amen. Maybe that's a good place to stop. <laughs> Key is you got to have faith first. Seek first the kingdom of God and let Him add His life to you. Let Him t- receive His life into you i mean it's mind-boggling i had no idea what this christianity stuff was when you start talking about the spirit of god coming and living in you what even is that i mean that is (laughs) that's off the chart that's incalculable that is something that we don't really know we can't explain you know what Eye has not seen, nor has ear heard, neither neither has it even entered into the heart of man the great things that God has in store for them that love him. 
Woo! <laughs> right? <laughs> wow. So it's all possible in him. Hallelujah. Put him first. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You have delivered us and you are continuing to deliver us. Continue to deliver us from the things of the world. Continue, Lord. Help us to seek you first. We need your help, Lord. The disciples said, help us with our unbelief. Help us to seek you first. Help us to desire you above all things. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Each one that's here today, they came because they want something from you. They don't want anything from me. They don't want anything from all of us. They want something from you, Lord. Deliver it into their hearts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't we just have a, a season of prayer? Julie, would you maybe play uh, It's My Desire or something like that? Let's just, maybe we could just stand and pray together.